If you're considering placing a family member in long-term residential care, then one of the first questions you're likely to have will be around government subsidies. Whether you're eligible and the process you need to go through to gain these subsidies. In this video, I'll cover three things. Eligibility criteria, asset and income thresholds, and how you go about applying. To be eligible for the residential subsidy, there are certain criteria that need to be met. The first criteria is the person going into care must either be a New Zealand citizen or a resident. Secondly, the person going into care needs to be 65 or older. If your family member is under 65, they may still be eligible under certain circumstances. For further information, visit the Work and Income website. The next step is a needs assessment. A needs assessment is performed by a qualified professional who will thoroughly and accurately assess a person's care needs and recommend the services that will benefit them. The applicant will need to be assessed as requiring residential care on a permanent basis. In other words, the assessor has recommended that moving into a care home is the right decision. The fourth criteria is the care home you've chosen must be a facility that is DHB contracted. Most care homes will have a DHB contract, but it's an important question to ask when considering your options. Finally, the person moving into care must meet the asset and income thresholds. Let's start with assets. There are two different asset thresholds. One that includes your personal home and car, which I'll refer to as threshold A, and one that doesn't include your home and car, which I'll refer to as threshold B. The asset threshold used will be dependent on your particular situation. Let's break it down. There are three possible situations that would determine what threshold is used. A single or widowed person going into care, a couple where both are in care, and a couple where one is in care and the other is not. In the situation where a single person moves into care, or a couple where both are in care, then threshold A applies, which is 273,628. In this situation, your personal home and car will be counted towards your total assets. For a couple where one is in care and the other is not, then there is a choice between Threshold A and Threshold B. Like I mentioned, Threshold B means your family home and personal car are not counted towards your total assets. In this situation, the threshold is reduced to 149,845. It's important to note that these thresholds increase each year on the 1st of July. These thresholds mentioned here are from the 1st of July, 2023. Included in the asset assessment is cash and savings, investments, shares, investment properties, boats, camper vans, and similar items. Assets do not include basic items such as clothing, household items, jewelry, and prepaid funerals of up to 10,000. Work and income will also want to know if your family member or their partner has ever transferred assets into a trust or been the settler, trustee, or beneficiary of a trust or an estate. In some cases, assets you have transferred to a trust can still be counted as yours. One important part of the asset assessment is a consideration of assets which are gifted or sold. Work and income will check what assets your family and their partner has gifted or sold in the past five years, but they won't count up to 7,500 worth of assets per year, a total of 37,500. Work and income may also choose to exclude gifts when given in recognition of care. For example, if your family member made gifts to a carer who supplied them with at least 12 months of continuous care within the last five years, this may be excluded from the asset assessment. However, it's important to note that a carer cannot be a family member's partner 
or a dependent child. For gifts that were given more than five years ago, the annual amount that's exempt towards being counted towards your assets is $27,000 per year, including gifts given by a partner. This rate does change occasionally, so be sure to check the Work and Income website before going ahead with any gifting plans. When it comes to income limits, it is important to remember that income is not simply what is gained from private employment. Different income apply to different situations. Work and income will assess income for each application, including New Zealand superannuation payments, the veteran's pension, and any other benefits. 50% of life insurance annuities, 50% of private superannuation payments, and pensions from international governments. Interest earned from bank accounts, contributions from relatives, incomes from investments, business or employment, income or payments from an estate or trust. Income exemptions include a small amount of income from assets, a partner's earnings from paid employment, and the war disability pension. The subsidy amount is the difference between how much an applicant must contribute towards their care based on an asset and income assessment and how much the care costs, according to the Ministry of Health. For example, if the financial means assessment determines that an applicant must contribute $200 towards their care and the Ministry of Health confirms the care costs $1,200 a week, the subsidy will be $1,000 a week. It is important to note that the cost of care excludes premium room charges. If the applicant chooses a premium room over a standard room, then the additional charges will need to be paid for privately. If a needs assessment reveals that your family member requires care in a residential facility, then the assessor will provide you with the subsidy application forms, including the form for a financial means assessment. The next step is to complete these forms and send them to work and income. It is recommended to complete these forms as promptly as possible, as processing the application can take some time. Work and income will inform you whether you qualify for the residential care subsidy, and if so, how much you will receive, and therefore, how much you will need to contribute yourself. In summary, Step one is to consider the applicant's eligibility. Step two, the applicant will need to complete a needs assessment to see whether long-term residential care is a recommended option. Step three is to apply for the subsidy using the financial means assessment forms provided by the needs assessor. Step four is to wait and hear from work and income about whether the applicant meets the criteria and if so, how much will be paid towards their care. If the applicant doesn't meet the asset and income thresholds, you may be eligible to apply for the residential care loan. Also, once in care, you may reapply for the residential care subsidy at any stage if your financial situation changes and you believe you may now meet the criteria. For any further information, please refer to the Work and Income website.